basically I just decided to throw away all of my questions. Um, because, I, I, because I think that, that many of you like if I recognize some of the guys. Um, and so if you part of the team, so it's pretty easy and you never be, you never have a chance to kind of have a downfield of your experience of the lesson learned and, and, and I really, we never really talk about the decision that, that, that was made partially, I think was partially responsible for that because I was one of the person who voted for Chip to go to Washington DC after the first um, um, after the first uh, after the first um, design presentation where you present many, many um, um, proposition and I voted for the project. So but I, I I like to start out with a question um, which um, I think can be answered by everybody has to do with a new icon for a very traditional or at least a sea version that the house has a traditional icon and you guys stop, kind of came up with something which uh, changed that notion, changed the notion of um, what I call the model form. And a new lifestyle. So it was very, very conscious that we decided to do that. Can everyone hear me or do I need a microphone? Mm -hmm. Do you need a microphone maybe to the camera? It's okay. Don't worry about it, man. We can hear you. It wasn't really a 
discussion that they were having, although they were, they, it's interesting to know that many of them thought that they were kind of earth shattered. They hadn't thought that they, they, they didn't seem to be setting out to create a new architecture, but they did think that they were creating architecture that, was, that prioritized either sustainability or solar power in some way. And as we discussed the project with other teams, no matter how much we, uh, and I'm saying this a lot in a kind of suggestion, internal discussion afterwards, no matter how much we talked about how the teams had shortcomings, they failed to address something. No matter how traditional we thought their approach was, they always thought we were talking about somebody else. And so, so, you know, it, even if it was the second most traditional team there, they thought they were doing it. And so it really highlighted the difference Set out and, and wanted to win all ten. 
and, and it should be pointed out, I, I think people, so the right half of the room is basically a team to about the year of the fourth row. On the left half of the room, you guys are all desirable and interesting to you. Um, so I, I hopefully you all know that um, with respect to the objective contests, um, our house is well or better than any other house there. And we tie to the first to the number of them. You understand that half the contest is a meter. That is, they literally just stick a meter on your house and measure how much electricity you are producing. Put a temperature sensor in your house and measure what the inside temperature is like. And in those competitions, we did as well or better than every team there. Um, and it was really only in the subject of categories that we suffered. And, and we sort of knew that going in that that would be a challenge for us, but we never allowed that to, or rather, we, we always allowed it to influence our thinking, but we didn't have a spirit discussion about how much should we care about, you know, first of all, we can't predict what the jury's going to think. And even if we could, how much should we care? It's like saying, you know, I'm going to go into uh, my final project and I, I know that Hernan's on my jury, he's going to hate this, so I'm going to change the project completely in order to satisfy the, the criteria of jury that you don't even know whether they're going to be there or not or what their thought process could be like. So we, we always had this discussion internally. Um, but we always came out on the side of, we, you know, the product has to be true to itself, the design has to be true to whatever its kind of internal logic and its, its DNA is. Um, you you know, address the question about the high power um, I think it's not iconic in a traditional sense that, you know, it's a modern architecture would be, but it's iconic in a sense that it is a very clear diagram about what a house doing to create shelter for us. And um, everything that is expressed in the building, the skin, um, the solar panels, even the shape of the building is doing something um, that relates exactly to the environment. So in that way, um, it, is, it is iconic because the, the form of the building um, gives a, an environmental reading of architecture. Well, you, because were you very conscious about the iconic aspect of the new project? Was it a conscious thing that you wanted to do? Because first of all, you use a, uh, in a way, an extremely logical, pragmatic solution. You want to be the most efficient. So you use insulation. As, as a way of developing that. So the, the insulation became the envelope of the building. So you, 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 you took the insulation from within a sandwich wall. Typically, nobody ever know anything about insulation because you don't see it. Even when you wear a down jacket, the insulation is in between the two. You end up like this, it's not like Thinking about insulation as something that is expressive and it's part of it's part of the imagery of, of the building. Um, and so there is a conscious effort of turning it into an, uh, an iconic image, isn't it? Or was it accidental? It all came from can you hear your, your speed online with it all coming? How it would perform it. There's never a moment when we said we need this thing to have this iconic image so it will be remembered um, and, and stand out to the rest. And it certainly didn't start to start to the same. But every but every drawing and rendering that you show is a very iconic object. Well I think it appears to be iconic because, you know, like Rita Brian said, every step in the design process was done with performance and functionality in mind. So the shape um, the shape of the building was a result of that. The happiness was a result of that. And because it was so function driven, it just by the by the nature of us doing that every step of the way, I think in the end that produced a very clear picture about what the house was. That could be attributed. So we also decided that we want to you know, express performance in a, in a certain way that it has not been expressed. So I suppose in that in that direction, we take it into an iconic place. 
Uh, because we, we wanted a lot of insulation, and we decided we want to do it like any other house. We don't want to make really big wall insulation, we want to discuss it. And what we ended up with emerged through the process. It wasn't like we set out to end up, we set out to make something that would be iconic in the sense that you're describing. Uh, I think to a certain extent, I believe most of us were sort of surprised at where we ended up. Certainly nobody expected. You saw the range of stuff that we had in the beginning. Because we went through three semesters of winnowing and mashing up the best results of, the, of each of the semesters to create the brief for the following semester and then did that again three times to end up with the project we ended up with. And I I would be flabbergasted if anybody at the outset could have predicted it would be anything like what we ended up with. In fact, even at a certain point when we were trying to get it to stay, you know, we, we ended up with this the chip 1.0 that was the conceptual design design that got us into it. And we were sort of satisfied with that. And, and we thought, okay, we can move forward with this. It, it moved away as the design evolved. Uh, so we use that as a brief for the following semester, and then we got a we got a way bigger range of projects than we expected, since we thought everybody was going to be embroidering around the edges of the basic chip design. Would you give, do you touch on something that I think is really um, crucial in the process of the design of the chip? Um, and that is the
uh, uh, basically passed into the resources of the parallel, you know, this massive parallel processing capability we had where we had, uh, you know, 30 total designs tackling the same set of issues, giving us all sorts of different perspectives on it, and uh, way more uh, variety than you would ever allow yourself in any, any kind of normal uh, circumstances. And then the value of that is that we ended up in a place that nobody could have predicted. Uh, we thought outside the box in, in a more serious way than probably if we had just assigned it as a problem to a couple of people. Um, the downside was, of course, it took a lot longer than it would uh, uh, perhaps be more than uh, There was some uh, disappointment uh, around the table for the things that didn't make it. It's like there were too many good ideas. And the biggest, the, big, the biggest uh, uh, difficulty was in editing them and deciding what good ideas would stay and what good ideas fit best with the other good ideas to come up with something. Well, then, then I would like to kind of, um, kind of move the question to another aspect of this, which has to do with the fact that cheap has to be transported to Washington, D.C. So part of the design was to do the most out this is lifestyle actually now. But the other, the other aspect was to see how do you take it apart and put it together. And clearly cheapest after we done what we would consider an architecture that would easily Able to a modular system or anything like that. So, when we started out with a certain design, but then we have to provide a strategy of dismantling, assembly. How do we approach that as a product? We did not. <laughs> Kind of clever about how to assemble each 
it fits really well into the spirit of the thing. I mean, um, going back to this idea of you know being comparing it to a dying on the house, it's it's almost exactly like a house, but exactly getting it's entirely like a house, but entirely different. So it's um, that's the good. Nothing is uh, part of the 
system, especially the house. Um, maybe the exception would be the wall where the furniture is, that is out. Um, but you build everything. Everything is either built in cabinetry or uh, custom made. So there's a lot of kind of uh, very specialized design in Special in design, but not construction. Design is cheap. You know, you pay the same fee to the architect whether it's well designed or poorly designed. And so we spend, you know, we, we just leverage our design dollars further, I think, by using conventional, you know, bottom feeder technology for the most part, uh, including things that estimator guy assumed we were going to be super expensive on, like the cabinets. We ended up just getting. Uh, off-the-shelf uh, cat parts cabinets that we tweaked here and there to, to, to make them look nicer or do unusual, what for them would have been unusual things, but generally would be what a contractor would think was the very low end of the, uh, of the scale. So in other words, you were using off-the-shelf components and modifying them to make it more Materials a lot. He had to put the materials that we specified in his spreadsheet, and that's, that's So, if I would, I, I'd like to go back to the, the lesson because I think, for, especially for um, some of the students who may be interested in participating in the next survey. Finished. What's going to get the project accomplished? 
is a certain amount of stamina and a certain amount of momentum, which are which you have to sustain at the level of a group of people, all of whom are excited and interested and have different ideas about how things should happen. Okay, but there's something you never. There's got to be one thing you never do again, and there's got to be something left on the table. That well, you let's, let's talk about what we might do again. Okay, yeah, that's true. I think. And, and, <laughs> uh, uh, I think what we uh, should actually, I just uh, I meant to say what we wouldn't do again, but uh, <laughs> this is a positive thing, and the steps are already being taken to address it, which is to bring, make sure that Caltech is, is, is more on board earlier in the process, so they're more part of the in, initial discussions that Brian's talking about. Just because of the way it unfolded last time, they came in uh, fairly late, uh, uh, and so, for better or worse, took a receipt, had to take a receipt of a certain amount of design that had already been established, or certainly to set of goals and stuff. But I think that uh, uh, you guys are on board much more uh, quickly this time, and so we'll be helping to generate those ideas rather than simply reacting to them. And I think that's got to help because Caltech was understood from the beginning last time as being kind of the secret weapon, right? And, and they they came through on that level in, in all the places where they could, but it only made us feel like, damn, if they had only been there earlier and had more to say about what we did, it would have been just so much better. But you know what, you, you, you bring up a bit of an audit point that I actually didn't want to talk about, which has to do with the process. The design process is very different from the scientific process because we have solved the problem and we need to have something to solve the problem. And um, architects have come up with a lot of things. So I don't know if any of you think that they're like, from your point of view, if you come in earlier, how would you give, how, how would you contribute to that? Well, we've already started with this process very proper and we have a top-down control of the process here, so we're still in the house. That's where we're serving all the values, etc. And then from there, we have your engineering in the process that we need to do these things to design some extra web system to help uh, accomplish that. And then it seems like our idea should have something to do. should have certain roof shape points so that should work. So, you already have sort of a seat in whatever design is out of that start. I think it would be just, even if there's nothing prescriptive that comes out of it, just literally having you guys at the table while the initial sketches are made, so to speak, even if you don't necessarily work that way, but even while the initial uh, uh, overtly architectural design ideas are mooted, uh, that, that's, a, that's a huge uh, improvement over what happened last time. I know there was a certain amount of dissatisfaction uh, on the Caltech side with these, you know, the, the puppy expression, you know, the softness of the exterior. Uh, and you know, on the Sire side, but much but less so, certainly. And uh, I'm hoping that in the end, it, it kind of, everybody's happy with it. But uh, I think, um, and, I, and, I, and I wouldn't want that to mean that had you guys been on board earlier, we wouldn't have done it. Uh, but we, we might have done it in a smarter way, you know, or, or a, you know, in a way that, that addressed the concerns um, more directly at the outset rather than in, in a kind of way. Um, Just to introduce a few things, right? Scott and Cole is also from Caltech, and Q is in charge of all the computing system, so the connect that controls the entire house and the iPad app, and he was there from very early on as well. <coughs> Thank you. 
conventional way that you're trying to solve uh, specific problems with insulate the house well. Do you think that that is time? Which is one of the reasons the house has the shape um, for many, for a number of different reasons. But yeah, I kind of forgot the question too. So, <laughs> so sorry. So would you would you um, so in other words, I mean that would be like the marriage of of collaboration when the two disagree. Your research and your analysis may change the shape of the house. Right? Um, did you guys accept that? I mean, uh, I don't see why not. It would be in, in, the nature, it's in the nature of this process that they would have to convince us. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> so you yeah, didn't say that you would accept, you said you would be happily convinced. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, that's, so, that's what we had to convince them, or, or at least outvote them, because there were a lot more of us. But uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe this is next time around. So yeah. that, that sort of speaks to, like, like the, again, the way in which decisions are made. Because again, you're, you're sort of, you're going through an environment on the architectural side where you were a student and you were working at the level of like, a studio project, right? And, and the biggest thing you had to worry about was a 10 week long project, right? Um, and then you're suddenly put in an environment where the decisions that you're making now are going to come back and bite you in the ass six months later, a year later, a year and a half later. Um, and in a lot of ways, that's, that's a lot better for your education. Um, but as a result, that like there has to be a way in which this, you know, whether whether there's a you know there's an objective finding that says it should be this way, and then, but there has to be a discussion, there has to be you know convincing that goes on. And like that kind of, of discussion can be really healthy really productive and sometimes it can be like difficult for the, the momentum of the thing. Again, it's sustained over a year and a half, two years. And uh, you know, the artists who work in the, in the real world know that you sort of get sick of a project by the end of it. By the time that you're in the construction administration, uh, you're kind of tired of this thing. Um, and it's, you know, we lived and breathed this by both the faculty and the students were up in space every day for, you know, since January of last year, if not Previously, for those who filed the application, so I mean, it's uh, it, it sounds kind of boring and managerial to say uh, the problem is really people, not design. But that, that's where I would start with it and say, that, like, you have to start with like designing the organization itself before you ever talk about what the design drivers going to be. I mean, in a way, when, when you say that uh, this is a certain Meaning that it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of work, it takes that it's how you marry design concept to reality and meditation, and how do you work and how do you do that, how do you take how you do this and all of that. And it, it, in, in a way, it seemed to me that it's a little bit of a kind of training. If you, if you kind of survive this test, it's okay, I can be an architect. Otherwise, I can never do anything else. Would that be something that's what we went through? I would say it was a trial and fire for all of us. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure I understand the scope of the question, but I, I would say that it was good for everybody involved. It was very rewarding, but also very difficult. Um, so, does that mean that everybody would have to do this again would be doing it? Does it mean another one? Experience, initial experience, yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a very different question. Yeah. Like if the future me came and said it's going to be hard, it's going to take a few years of your life, and you're going to get the following things out of it, I would say right on, let's do it. Yeah, I'd say it's really important. Yeah, certainly, uh, I think that you can only ask that question assuming that we're learning from what we do. Uh, I don't know that. Uh, it's a realistic question to say we can literally do everything that you did last year. No, that was, that was not what I meant as a question, but I meant as an experience of going through a process of, <coughs> of really being through the challenge of coming up with a design solution with a very, very
after every semester. <laughs> and uh, I came back every time. And I think it was by this year. By choice. Were you questioning? The mystery I, the mystery of what was going to happen to the ship was um, more appealing than the mystery of the movie in another studio. And so I even still feel that today, you know, the conversations we have now about the ship is, you know, how we're going to improve upon that skill still. Package it and get it out there in the real world. So it's still going on. Which is different to say, when my thesis was done, I was done with the thesis. I wanted to move on. So this is different. I guess I would just, uh, not to uh, stop any other team members from speaking, but just a, a point of clarification. Um, I would say that, uh, of course, there are, you know, every stage of the project offers, you know, I agree with everything I said, that like, this is, this is when you know that you are one for this, when like, you, you move to the next phase, you're like, holy shit, there's a whole new set of problems, and now we're gonna tackle all these. And that, that that energy is what sustains you, you know, through what is a very difficult process. Um, I, I guess I only say, like, you know, at times where you, you get to the end of the thing, and you're, just, you're so tired of it, you've worked on it for so long. That's only to, to really emphasize um, for, and I'm sort of speaking to the left after the room a little bit here, uh, if the school is interested in doing it again, and if there are students who are interested in doing it again, uh, understand the scope of what the thing is. Understand the magnitude of what the thing is, and, and know that going in eyes wide open. It, you know, it clearly can be done, like we all did it, and we all did it not never having done it before, um, at both as individuals and also as an institution. There's some institutional memory associated with this first run that would benefit the second run. Um, but it's just that, that people who are interested in doing it should just understand that, that uh, you know, the, the momentum and the, the stamina and the, the sort of inertia of all these, these things that are associated with any project, whether you're designing cereal boxes or building a building, uh, that you have to be able to move as an organization up through a two year arc. Right, rather than defend the design idea for a single semester. Um, and it, it's, it's that. Uh, so yeah, it's difficult, but yes, you are rewarded along the way, and I definitely think it's worth doing that. Um, but you just have to understand, like, you have to establish that value set at the beginning, or you're, you're not going to make it through two years. I wonder if you can talk about your idea. First, I can do it all over again, but I don't want to do it again in <laughs> <laughs> I think it brings up a lot of good questions about the role the relationship of, of the engineer and the architect uh, because it, it requires that we recalibrate some of the priorities that we set here. For example, you know, for Andrew to say uh, there are some things we would, have, you know, say from the very beginning we have to use this technology. Generally, I would say thank you very much for the information. Let me take it back and think about it. And I, and I hope that, give, you know, that, that that request is coming out of the feeling that this thing is going to absolutely perform better. If I think about the, you know, the, the piece of architecture that really influenced me, that had an effect on me, some of them don't deal with the environment very well at all. And so you, know, you could essentially go through architecture school and have a very, uh, well, maybe not in the world today, but at one time you can go through architecture school and really not be very conscious of the environment at all and make pretty damn good work. Um, so certainly, I, would, I completely agree with Wes. I would go into the, the very beginning, uh, and I would hope to use all of it. I'm not sure that you know I would, I would want to be. I do want insisting that it be used. I think in order to keep the priority, we probably there probably has to be a bit of a give and take. Um, and finally, I just wanted to say, as an instructor, I I think that this as a project is something. If I look at the people that were involved over the long haul, I think that this offered. A, Path for learning for a number of instructors, for a number of students, uh, where at the end of the process there was this incredible sense of accomplishment that came not just out of putting nails in two by fours, but that really felt like design had meaning in a way that it hadn't happened uh, in other projects. And um, you know, I think it just came from the intimacy of working with the things and learning that design can happen on this level. Uh, and. I, you know, I don't want everyone out there doing that, but I think this offered a path that was, in, this, you know, very similar. It, it ended up in the same place in so many other design studios.
studios end up in terms of the priorities being in architecture, but it took a very different path. I'm really happy to see that path existing now as I think it has been a while. It is a very Maintaining, you know, kind of maintaining what, what, what I think we 